Welcome to the Land of House channel. I'm Seth. Today I have the pleasure of working with the Ruxu 51.2 volt lithium iron phosphate battery rated at 5.12 kilowatt hours. Let's go ahead and do an unboxing of this battery and then take a look at all of its features. Then we will connect this up to an inverter and see how well it performs with a charge and discharge test. Let's take a moment to unbox this battery and see what all comes in this package. Now keep in mind that this battery is quite heavy, so be careful when you pick it up. I highly recommend that you use two different people and not try to pick this up on your own. Looks like we have a box in a box, so let me get this out of this box and we will open up that one. Let's see what's inside of this box. First of all, there is a checklist to show that everything has passed okay. There is a user manual. I will take a look at that here in just a moment. Over here on this side, looks like we have a very short data cable. So we will take a look at that as well. And this seems to be a ground. A good bit of foam to protect this battery in transit. In order to save my tabletop, I'm gonna pick this up out of the bag and set it on top of this other piece of foam over here. Oh, yep, that's it. Mm. Oh. All right, got it. The battery is now unboxed and here on my table. I have to say, as I've been looking this thing over, it is nice. They have paid a lot of attention to detail and it definitely shows. Let's start an overview up here on the top. Here is the data sticker. So this is a lithium iron phosphate battery and the model number is the RXLFP48100. Rated voltage 51.2 volts. Capacity is 100 amp hours. Rated energy is 5.12 kilowatt hours. The discharge and charge is 50 amps, but it has a max charge current of 70 amps and a max discharge current of 100 amps. The front of the battery does have two all metal carrying handles, which can be folded out of the way if need be. There are places for mounting screws here on both sides. And as far as the terminals go, you have a red for positive and a black for negative. Now you'll notice these aren't your traditional bolt thread here. So the cables that actually come with this are referred to as bus bar cables and those will snap into place and not have any exposed metal that you could be shocked from. And in order to get that disconnected, there's a button on top of the cable. You just press that in and then wiggle that cable out of there. I do have the positive and negative cables for that uh, connection there. There is a grounding screw down here and that's what you will use that green and yellow ground cable with. So here you can find the Ruxu logo and the website and some information on how to contact them. Now here is some communication ports. This also did come with a very small data cable, which can be used right there. Here we have some dip switches, which will help you to know which position this battery is in, in a rack system. There's a run and alarm and a state of charge indicator. Over here you've got an on and off rocker switch that will allow you to turn this battery on or off. Now on the sides, there are plenty of screws that you can access the inside of this battery. We may be doing that here in just a moment. More screws on the back as well. Because this battery has so many screws that are easy to access, let's go ahead and take this cover off so we can see what the interior of this battery looks like. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and lift off this cover so we can see what's inside. There's a thin layer of plastic to prevent the batteries from being able to touch the metal housing. I'll go ahead and pull this off as well. Looks like it uses the exact same screws as the case. And now you can see the interior workings of this battery. First of all, you'll note there are two different sets of eight and they are connected together over here with this bus bar. So the positive starts right here and connects to this battery, which then uh, alternates over here, as you can see. And it looks like these sensors are glued down tight, and that is good to see. Look how clean these wire runs are. I like that. 
Uh, so your negative comes out over here and then those come down here to a resistor pack and then uh, move over here to where they are attached through a bus bar to those terminals. All right, I don't want to touch any of that further, so I'm going to put this battery back together and we will begin doing our charge and discharge testing. Now that we've seen the overview of this battery, let's connect this to an inverter and see some AC output. I've placed a 48 volt inverter here on the wall and I have the two different cables coming out so we can connect it to the battery. The positive is going to go over here on the red side. Go ahead and click that into position. Make sure it makes a snap. Black wire is the negative. It's going to go over here. Also make sure that makes a good snap. Now I don't have any communications set up on this battery, but I'm going to make sure that my dip switches are set to one. So I've just got the first one set right here to one. And then I'm going to go ahead and press the power button right here. Maybe hard to see from your angle, but the state of charge indicators just came on. So now let's go ahead and turn on this inverter up here. It's got a breaker on this side and then an on switch up under here. The state of charge down here on the battery shows right at 50%. And so that should be sufficient to get some power shown up here on this inverter. Simply for demonstration purposes, I have a receptacle wired up to the AC output of the inverter. So that will allow me to turn on this light and we'll see some output. This inverter is showing 52.6 volts and 120 volt output, which means if I go ahead and turn on a load such as this light over here, there we go. The battery is now being consumed by the inverter. So I can move up here and see 34 watts being drawn out of that battery. As you can see, the Ruksu battery and the inverter over here are working just fine together. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn this inverter off and the battery off. Let's shut everything down in that order. This single Ruksu rack battery seems to be performing quite well with my small inverter up here. Now remember, it is a rack battery, so you can add multiple of these together to make one giant battery. For my case here, I'm just uh, testing out this one. Now, stay tuned for a future video where I'm going to be installing this inverter and this battery into my other shed. And that way you can uh, see this thing operating with solar charging and putting out a higher load than this uh, 34 watt light here. Um, if you want to learn more information about this battery, I'll have links in the description down below. I'm Seth Johnson with Landa House, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.